I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Pat from Sabaton, and this is Sabaton History. You might not think of Brazil when you think of World War II, but the Brazilian Expeditionary Force fought and fought well in Italy, producing three extraordinary heroes. Our song, The Smoking Snakes, is about the memory of those people. And we actually went down to Cuesta Fora in Brazil and met the people who served with them. Now, Par is going to tell you a bit about the song, but I'm going to tell you about the Brazilian Expeditionary Force. When you think of the major combatants of the Second World War, Brazil is usually not the first nation that springs to mind. And indeed, if it had been up to the Brazilian government, they would have preferred to stay out of the conflict. Okay, in the 1920s, Brazil was haunted by internal conflicts, both politically and socially. Radicals on the left and on the right fought for control of the state, and a series of coups and insurrections destabilized the country. The rise of Getulio Vargas in the wake of the Brazilian Revolution of 1930 meant that on the one hand, Brazil began an era of industrialization and social reforms, while on the other hand, the country slowly shifted into authoritarian dictatorship. By 1937, Vargas was basically ruling the country by martial law. But although he had been inspired by and copied from the European fascists on his rise to power, he did not officially align himself with them. One major reason he did not was the growing influence of the United States. The US felt that Brazil, well, okay, most of Central and South America, was part of its sphere of economic influence and watched carefully for any signs of foreign influence. And indeed, there was a growing German influence in South America, especially in Argentina, Brazil's major enemy and rival. Though both countries had significant German and Japanese minorities who influenced public opinion. When the U.S. joined the war after Pearl Harbor in December 1941, American politicians acted quickly. Already in January 1942, they met with leading figures from all over South America and made an alliance with most of the nations, except Argentina and Chile. Brazilian politicians would still have gladly traded with the Axis powers, especially after Germany promised favorable arms deals for raw materials. But the U.S. made it perfectly clear that this was not cool with them and consequences would follow. So Brazil joined their South American alliance. The Axis powers were well aware of the importance of raw materials from South America to the Allied war effort. So German and Italian submarines began targeting cargo vessels from Brazil en route to the U.S. In August 1942 alone, German submarine U-507 torpedoed and sank five Brazilian ships. And hundreds of dead Brazilian sailors caused a huge public outcry. Although the isolationistic Vargas government did not want to be involved in the war, public opinion forced his hand and Brazil declared war on Germany August 22, 1942. This meant mobilizing the army and the navy, though both were in a rather poor state. Brazil did not have a large army anyhow, nor the equipment to outfit one. In fact, they were equipped with an amalgamation of European weapons, so they turned to the U.S. for help. The U.S. was actually not all that keen on helping out, since American industry had its hands full with equipping their own units, but they couldn't turn down the Brazilians without insulting them. So they offered to supply them with uniforms and rifles and some older artillery pieces, but everything else would have to wait. Brazil began training a division of three regiments with service and support companies attached to it. The Brazilian Expeditionary Force, or FEB, 25,000 men strong. Soon, American outfitted from head to toe, helmet, field jacket, boots and knife. They still had to train with old Springfield rifles instead of the standard M1s. By July 1943, they were ready. But the tanks, half-tracks and jeeps that had been promised had still not arrived, as they were not prioritized by American quartermasters. But where would the FEB be deployed? Guard duty on the Portuguese islands of the Atlantic was suggested. Then there was talk they would ship out to North Africa. But nothing happened for a whole year as the Brazilians waited and trained. By mid-1944, the war in the Mediterranean had progressed from North Africa to Sicily and then bogged down in Italy. With the Americans now engaged in northern France, 
They could use all the help they could get in Italy, where there was already a multinational force fighting at Monte Cassino. So in July 1944, the 1st Brazilian Regiment reached Italy. But the Americans there, at first, did not really know what to do with them and didn't even have enough barrack space for them. By now, there was a whole lot of discontent with the whole waiting around to do what they trained for shtick. The Brazilian soldiers were eager, but had been held back for so long that by then they had the saying, mais fasala uma cobra um cachimbo fumar do que a FEB embarçar. It is more likely for a snake to smoke a pipe than for the FEB to go into combat. Sort of like when pigs fly. The smoking snake became so popular that they made patches of it for their uniforms. However, by September 1944, they approached the front lines in Tuscany at the Arno River. Here, they had their baptism by fire. Most of the Brazilian troops were dangerously green in spite of the extensive training because only a few older officers had actual combat experience from the Brazilian Revolution. But they fought skirmishes against German and Italian units until the winter came. Allied High Command was determined to make a northern Italian push in spring 1945 with the aim of capturing Bologna. For that, they would have to first secure the high ground in northern Tuscany. So in the winter of 44-45, the Brazilians were sent out to fight in the mountains in temperatures down to minus 20 degrees and often against veteran German Gebirgsjäger. Most of the Brazilians had never seen snow before. Fighting in the mountains was as tough as you might imagine. The terrain was difficult and the Brazilians engaged German forces at Monte Castello, a well-defended artillery position. They were often sent out at night on combat patrols to infiltrate the German lines, probe their defenses, and capture prisoners. As the 1945 campaign season began, Allied High Command began Operation Encore. This was a combined American-British offensive to finally drive the German 10th and 14th armies out of Italy. The Brazilians, supporting the Americans, would send out their whole division. They were tasked with attacking Montese, a major German strongpoint in the south of the Po Valley. The attack on the city was planned for mid-April, and the Brazilians would advance on the left flank of the American thrust, this time even supported by armor. Prior to the attack, the Brazilians sent out patrols to reconnoiter the heights and villages around the city, or to clear minefields and update the maps. But the German infantry lay in wait, and on April 14th, right before the main attack, the Brazilian Mountain Infantry Patrol, consisting of Geraldo Baita da Cruz, Arlindo Lucio da Silva, and Geraldo Rodriguez de Souza, was ambushed by a large German force. Spotted by a German machine gun, the three men ran for cover. They were heavily outnumbered and could not be reinforced, but they did not surrender. Instead, they returned fire until their ammunition ran dry and mortar shells began falling around them. According to the legend, the Brazilians still refused to surrender and instead fixed their bayonets and advanced on the Germans. The three were killed and the Germans then buried them and planted a cross as a tribute to the heroism the Brazilians displayed. The cross bears an inscription, which I'll get to in a moment. The battle for Montese began, and the three heroes were not the only Brazilians to die that day. Montese was liberated by the Brazilians after several days of house-to-house -house fighting, and this battle was both the heaviest and also the final major battle the FEB fought in the Second World War. Fighting continued after the battle as the Germans retreated, but once Mussolini was killed by Italian partisans on April 28th, the unconditional surrender of the Axis forces in Italy was signed. Now, I spoke with a Brazilian historian about the grave and its veracity. The FEB's burial platoon did find a grave with a cross and the inscription Dry Tapfere Brazil. And the soldiers were identified by their dog tags. This is beyond doubt. For the Germans to bury them at all is very unusual. Corpses were often booby trapped even. So you have to wonder what they did to impress the Germans. The bayonet charge and, and facing German fire is likely, though not definitely, an invention. The grave also bears the date January 24th, 1945, long before the fighting for Montesi. However, the more famous version of the story is what I said from the Montesi fighting and with Dry Brazilianische Helden, three Brazilian heroes on the grave. So there are two competing stories. 
and we don't know for sure what those brave men in the grave specifically did. Anyhow, the battle for Italy was over, and so was the war for the FEB. For the Brazilian national conscience, the death of the three heroes became synonymous with their struggle in a war far from home, in an unfamiliar land, on unfamiliar ground. This fight has become legend, and we will never know what happened exactly on that day. But the story of those brave Brazilian men helps us make sense of the seemingly senseless death of endless millions on the battlefields of the world. These three young men died fighting selflessly against the Nazis to save countless other lives, the lives of strangers. And that is the ultimate sacrifice, lest we forget. We'd like to thank Icles Rodriguez and the channel Leitura Obriga Historia for help with the research for this. There is a link to their channel in the description. <laughs> Now, I find it very interesting that you chose to write about Brazilians during World War II, you know? Yeah, it is an interesting thing, you know, but we get a lot of ideas from fans all across the world, okay. and we do have a lot of Brazilian fans, so they kept giving us ideas. They've been writing here to us every week since we started saying Smoking Snakes, Smoking yeah, Snakes. Yeah, we can imagine yeah. that. But actually, this one was inspired by just searching, researching. We were looking for stories about heroes. And I put in the word heroes. On in the internet. On yeah, in, in the search engines on different languages. And when I put it in in German, Helden, yeah. that's when I came across Drei Brasilias Helden. As we saw in the history. Yeah, and uh, it was a bit difficult to find the correct information for it because obviously we don't speak Portuguese. But they think you speak every language. Yeah. You guys are gods. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. tell them that. All right, well, okay. we, we don't speak all the languages, but we luckily have a lot of friends around the world who help us speak these languages. Okay. And some years later, we are finding ourselves on a tour in Brazil. In Brazil. In the city of Curitiba, we went actually to the Smoking Snakes Museum. Okay. where we met with some veterans and we were awarded with a medal for, um, for the memory of keeping Oh, for commemorating alive. the... Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, later we went to a city called Juez de Fora, where obviously the, the three people that we sing about in the song came from. Yeah. And uh, as we were standing backstage before the show was about to begin, um, the promoter of the concert came and said, we have a special guest here tonight who would like to meet with you. And in came an older man. Well, we understood he was a veteran. And he explained in Portuguese, though, that he was serving together with the guys that we were singing about. Oh, so he was fighting in Italy with them. Yes. Cool. The, the man was making a lot of funny jokes, yeah? including one where he was poking at our singer and he was poking him yeah. with the metal armor that he's wearing. Oh, sure, okay. And he was like, that's not bulletproof. So you can't survive in war. And then he was looking at our drummer, who is a very tall guy, and yeah. said, you can't survive a war either, because you're simply too tall that the enemy will shoot you instantly. The snipers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Then we took a couple of pictures with this man. And after that, we say, thank you for showing up and um, have a safe trip home, because we're going to go onto the stage and perform the show now. Right. And um, he was like, yeah, I'm staying for the show. Oh, OK. okay. <laughs> and, and we thought, oh, you know, this going pretty wild out there. It's a heavy metal crowd out there and they are Brazilians, so they are a very tough crowd. But the man said, yeah, but I did survive the war, didn't I? I, I think I'm gonna survive a heavy metal show. Survive a sabotage. <laughs> Now, there's one thing that you told me, which I think is really interesting. Since you, do, you know, your song is a tribute to these men, but there's also tributes to your song. Yeah, well, a lot of them, actually. If you think about it that way, you, you refer to the orchestral version. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because the, the song Smoking Snakes is obviously about the Brazilian army. Sure. And there's a lot of Brazilian army orchestras who cover this one. And I think they actually made it to one of their marching songs now. Wait, can we hear and see some of those right now? That's really cool that, that you guys get honored in return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we always get um, blush, even if it's just one person and a different band, or in this case, whole orchestras. We appreciate when people covering our tunes. Yeah.
in, in some of our songs, it's actually funny when we are talking about a specific country, yeah. we try as well sometimes to get in something of the local language. And in the song Smoking Snakes, we have a few words in Portuguese. Okay. And uh, it, it is, of course, it becomes very powerful when it's in your native language. And when thousands of Brazilians sing along to Portuguese language, it sounds like this. And that was the story behind Smoking Snakes. But we'll see you next time on the Sabaton History Channel. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sabaton History Channel, check out the Indus other channels, and please also support us here on Patreon because that's really what makes this thing happen.